Hey, good morning, seventh grade. This is your math lesson for Thursday, April 23rd. Lesson 157 is due today on Thursday. Lesson 158 is due on Friday, April 24th. So first of all, we're going to look at what is on 158. So you can open your books to lesson 158. And then we will look at some of the answers on 157. So have your uh, assignment from 157 ready and we'll look at some of those answers. But first of all, lesson 158 has to do with the three basic ways that you get paid for a job. Right? You have wage, you have a wage which is per hour. Okay, you get paid twenty dollars an hour. Keep track of your hours. And that's how you get paid. That's wage. That's the most common one that we know of, probably, that we experience. Salary is a set wage. Okay? Salary means no matter how many hours you work, you get paid $40,000 a year. So every year, you get paid $40,000. If you work 50 hours one week, and 20 hours the next week, you get the same paycheck. So they just you just divide the 40,000 out by you know how many weeks in a year, and that's how much you get paid a week. Uh, so that's a set set wage, set pay, salary. Then commission is percent of sales. If you're a salesman, okay, like the problem in number. Number three, Dale made $75,000 on mini barn sales. Okay, now what th that doesn't make it completely clear there, but Dale is not getting paid that $75,000. Okay, Dale is a mini barn salesman. So he works for someone else. He is going around promoting the product, saying, hey, I think you could really use a mini barn. All right. And so then to, to motivate their salesmen, bosses will say, okay, you can get 7% of every sale that you make. Okay, so that motivates them to go out and sell as many mini barns as they can. So he sold $75,000 worth of mini barns. Now he's not getting the 75,000, but his pay is seven percent of everything that he sells so your answer for number three will be seven percent of seventy five thousand or seventy five thousand times point zero seven is his amount of pay there all right and that's commission so let's just do a couple or do one for each one here uh, so some of the problems that you might see are if you work 38 hours for $16.25 an hour, the 38 hours for $16.25 per hour, okay? How much are you getting paid that week? 38 hours is about a week's worth of is about a week's worth of work, right? So that's simply what? What's the equation that you need there? 1625 for one hour. So if you're talking 38, this is simply a multiplication problem. 38 equals what? 48 50. $17, two places. So for the 38 hours of work, he is getting $617.50. Okay? So then if, suppose the problem was, for one week of work, 
so-and-so got paid $617.50. They worked 38 hours. How much do they get paid per hour? And it would be a division. That would be the total divided by 38 hours. Or total divided by, if, it, if you knew how much per hour they're making, then you'd know how many hours they work. All right? All right, what about salary? Suppose somebody gets paid, their salary is $32,240. So this is how much they get paid per year, $32,240. That's their salary, that's what they get paid all week, every, <clears throat> all year, all right? Suppose they get a paycheck every week. They get a paycheck every week. How much do they get paid per week? All right, how do you figure that out? How much do they get paid per week? So this is how much they get per year. Right? So how much do they get paid a week? Well, we need to know how many weeks in a year. How many weeks in a year? 52. So we have 52 into, or this number divided by 52. 32, 240. All right, carefully divide. So that's gonna be about what? Six maybe? Six, 12, 131. Zero, one, 52 into 104 would probably be about 2, right? 2, 4, <clears throat> 0, 0, 0. And we have what? Oh, yeah, the decimal point would be here. Be zero, zero, so decimal point there. So your answer is simply. $620 per week, $620, okay? If it would say, how much do they get paid a month? You would have salary divided by 12, 12 months in a year. How much do they get paid a day? Salary divided by 365, okay? Probably they won't ask you that. All right, commission of sales. Percent of sales. So you're a salesman. In April, you earned a commission All right. One twenty-three sixty. So she earned the commission one twenty-three sixty. All right. So that's how much. Commission they got for $2,472 worth of sales. Sales equals 2000 sorry, $2,472. Right, so a salesman sold this much product. He or she earned this much. What is their percent of commission? All right. What is their percent of commission? So the problem is actually, and you know how to do this, 123.60 is what percent of this number? 123.60. So you have 123.60. Well, let's get rid of this number two. So 12360 is what percent of 
2,472. Right? So let's get rid of this. Your missing number is here. Equals. So percent of commission. Let's make this C. Now let's make that P percent. Over 100. All right? So now you have 2,000 OP equals, what is this number times 100? This number times 100 would be 1, just move the decimal point two places, 12,360. All right? Divided by... 2,472 divided by 2,472. So P equals what? Make sure that we got all the numbers right. If you divide carefully, and I'm going to carefully divide with the calculator. So we have one, two, three, six, zero, six, zero divided by. 2472, 2472 equals 5. It will come out to 5, <clears throat> 5%. Okay? <clears throat> so you could also have, this number could be missing. You could say, they sold this amount with 5% interest. What is this number? So then it would be, what number is 5% of 2472? Figure those out, okay? And you've done all that kind of thing before. Just think about what's happening. All right, that is all we're going to do on that part. That is lesson 158. Let's look at 157 and just get a few answers without making many other comments. Number two, they say to draw a diagram so what you're doing is drawing two right triangles. Your diagrams are going to just simply look like this, and I will show you it, and then I will tell you that you don't have to do it, okay? I'll show you what they mean by it, and then I'll tell you that as long as you give me the right answers, uh, you don't have to draw the diagrams. So you have a pole that is 10 feet tall, Casting a shadow that is 15 feet long. Okay? So here's your... Here's your pole. That's 10 feet long. Casting a 15 foot shadow. Okay? The 10 foot pole, 15 foot shadow. All right, then the question is how tall is a power pole that costs a that casts a 60 foot shadow? So then you have this big old shadow, the pole. This is your X, this is the power pole, and this is the 60 foot shadow. All right. So that's the diagram that they're talking about with one of these. So your problem to figure out your missing number, you have same side, 10 over x equals 15 over 60. And then do the math. 15x equals 60 times x, or 600. 600 divided by 15 is 40 feet. Okay? So this x equals 40 feet. 
Now I am fine with just the answer, okay, 40 feet. So you do not have to draw that diagram, but that is what it's talking about. That is what it's talking about in lesson 155, which is the lesson that you're supposed to hand in. You're supposed to just draw and label a polygon, all right? All you're doing is drawing <clears throat> a right triangle and labeling the correct sides with your whatever feet it's supposed to be. The answer to number three is 80,000 meters squared. The answer to number four is 90,000 centimeters squared. Number six, you need two answers, 144 feet and 90 feet. Number seven, please be getting these right, okay? I very clearly had a video that told you what to do with uh, products and things of signed language, uh, sign, sign language, yeah, signed numbers, so pay attention to that. Go back to the lesson and figure it out. <coughs> Product means multiplication. If your signs are different, you multiply and the answer is going to be negative. If the sign is the same, if you have two negatives or two positives, doesn't matter if it's two negatives, two positives, the answer is positive when you're multiplying. So number seven is negative 10. Number eight is negative nine, oh, that's boring. And number nine is negative 49, and number 10 is negative 120, all negatives. Pay attention to product and sum. Product means multiply, every one you're multiplying. Right, sum means addition. Look at the rules for adding. 11 is negative 14. 12 is positive 14. 13 is positive 2. 14 is negative 14. 15, 255.15 grams. 16, you should have two answers. Your discount is 34 cents. Subtract discount from your original bill to give you $16.41 for total. You need two answers, $0.34, cents, $16.41. Answer for number 17 is 19. Answer to number 18 is 50. Number 20, of means to multiply. So number 20, the answer is 1-8. All right, sounds great. Have a great day. Language quiz and reading quiz on tomorrow, Friday. So pay attention to that.